Well, Alps getting there slowly, as you can see. Um, slowly making his way down. Oh, speak of the devil, there he is. The, uh, the annoying thing is the chicken wire, having to actually get that away from some of the vegetation, which is, is causing us a few problems, but we're getting there. Or when I say we, <laughs> but not say that, Alps getting there. Um, probably take this uh, tree out, which actually might cause some problems later on, uh, being so close to the wall. But yeah, good job. And uh, I'll put him on a time lapse, see if he can carry on. I don't think he's gonna go taking these ones down, but at some time, we will need to top them. Um, especially when I've actually seen that they do get quite close to the electrical cables that run up the road on the other side of that wall. probably sick to death of ceiling to ceiling but I've been up here again this morning filling all the cracks there's a few I need to go back and refill but you can see the difference from this one over here and this one over here actually that one's probably not so bad and then I can go up and sand the ceiling. Meanwhile, in the garden. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the garden. I wasn't expected to see my mother's bottom in the air. <laughs> Thought you were around the back. I know, but I'm not happy with that situation. It's pointless me doing it anymore until we have a conference. We have a conference? Yeah, we have to have a meeting. Oh goodness, sounds like I'm in trouble. There's far more great big rocks and boulders there than you think. More than you can carry. <laughs> I've only put a few in the um, wheelbarrow, can I hardly move it? But I decided that um, we need to talk about that. Okay, I will go over and have a look. I'll come with you. All right then. Now, this is the area that my mother's talking about down into the secret garden. This mound is full of, well, obviously, rocks. Mm, I'll show you. And we're not talking about one. <clears throat> All I want was it flattened. I only just lift this <laughs> wheelbarrow. <laughs> We've only got this number in here. I'm not actually it sure. It is all over that. Yeah, I'm not sure where these rocks came from. They haven't tumbled off the wall. They haven't that tumbled has, off. That has come out. That little circle there. Mm. Yes, so we do have need to have a rethink. So they're coming at least out to here. And if they're all the way back to the wall, this little bit in this wheelbarrow, which I can hardly move, and it's only come out that little circle, I don't know. <laughs> Are you defeated? I am at the moment. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's why she went to start another job. Yeah, I went back to Malevoa. <laughs> okay, we'll have a little bit of a think about that. So, this is before. I don't think we'll be seeing an aftershot, do you? Mm. Let's go and see what Alf's doing. If you go down to the woods today... Oh, there's another bottom in the air. Wow, look at the difference here. It's lighter and brighter already. Alf, I didn't know you were um, taking the trees down. <laughs> well, you managed to get all the chicken wire off across there then. All the way down. Not on the roof yet. No, that's fine because all the trees are growing through it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to take all these bottom limbs off, aren't we? These branches, just to let some more light in here and so that we can get to the chicken wire to remove it. Yeah, it'll be for a little more, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, you're here for another week and a half, don't worry. So what have you yeah, been up to? I've been digging out all this underneath all the weeds and stinging it, was to find the cobbles in the hopes that Carol could plant her hydrangea there. But they're coming further and further out. <laughs> <laughs> lots of these wire things that I believe something to do with the roof. Apparently. Crockett, they're the bits that hold the tiles um, in place, yes. I have to be careful over here because the ivy, which is an ever grow it, everlasting bind, has now loosened one brick. Yeah, that's what it does, I'm afraid. Yeah, so probably just try to lodge that back in now. Okay, so you want me to mix you up some cement? I'm going to leave you pointing now, am I? <laughs> She's <laughs> multitasking now. A nice bucket of decent earth. Oh my word. But might have to think again about this position for that hydrangea because uh, I've no idea how far these cobbles are coming out. They may, I don't want to uh, give you lots of it, they may actually go across the whole courtyard yeah, in cobbles. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So I don't want to take up any more of the grass than that. No. Just in case it comes out too far. I think just what you've done is the right distance. So I'm glad you're taking it easy and not overworking. <laughs> And can I just say that did a marvellous job, Mum. Hold on, Bells. Um, the hydrangea is from Rob. Oh, he bought it. What, Rob, as in from the Chateau de La La Salle? Who is one of our YouTube followers. Who yes. is actually uh, working away at La La Salle yes. with Terry Ash and the family. And he bought it over for me when they came to visit. Okay. Well, hopefully we're going to pinch him without Terry and Ash knowing. But shh, Mum's the word. <laughs> Mum's so the word. I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to find another yeah. spot. So you that. might find me in another area, having another little go somewhere else. Let's go and sit down and have a cup of tea. Good idea. It's the end of the day and Alf and I thought we'd sneak up to the top of the garden and have a sneaky drink when my mother's not looking. We deserve a drink, don't we, Alf? But while we've been sat here, I'm looking up at the trees thinking, hmm, there was a few plums on there. So I'm, I've gone to investigate and we found a few green ones, didn't we, Alf? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, then we realised that all the ripe ones were under our feet. Yeah. So here we have colander for you. We'll get down here. Pick up these farms, look at those. And you said they're nice and sweet? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that was a nice surprise, wasn't it? So what we're actually going to pretend is that we're up here treading treading the plums and making our own wine. <laughs> <laughs> Mum will be surprised, won't she? Now you've got your fruit for your lunch. Yeah, we've got um we've we've got uh, cherries. We've got cherries that you managed to get down from the tree this morning. They're actually yellow cherries, but they're nice and sweet too, aren't they? They were nice, yeah. Al's been sunbathing, topping up his tan, so we haven't been working him too hard. You throwing half of them away? No, not throwing half of them away. I'm just throwing them one dry. They aren't any good. Let's have a good look then. Oh, is that all there is? Yep, well, that's... That's a start. They look like my cherry tomatoes. Oh, but they taste yeah. a lot sweeter. Well done. Oh. You've still 
got him working. Look what we've got. Oh, wow. Okay, that's uh, dessert sorted tonight then. Or tomorrow night. They're good, aren't they? We were look up, looking up in the trees. They're, they're all green up in the trees. Right. And there's... Carol said... What's this down here? There's all these ripe ones. Brilliant. Is that all of them then? So Not do we need to take the tree again? No, that's no, there's, right. there's no more red ones up there. Okay. So this morning we had cherries. Yeah. All right. Ah. No, we've got plums. And fruits of our loin. Ah, brilliant. Just picked up the uh, this parcel, um, which was kindly sent to us by a company called Eddie Glide, as you can see on the box. Um, this is an electric bike, and the company contacted us uh, through our channel, and uh, we were really actually excited about it. It'd be really good to have an electric bike at the Chateau. Um, one of the main reasons is that uh, now Carol can come out and enjoy the countryside while I'm running, So, uh, which is what we used to do back in England. She would uh, cycle. Um, while I was running, but over here there's so many flipping nasty hills, it's not something that's encouraged her to come out. So now with the electric bike, uh, we can go out to, together. But um, first things first, one of us has got to build it, so uh, we'll put that together uh, and then talk a little bit more about it. Right, so that's all built. Uh, so it comes as a flat pack, but actually it's quite straightforward to put it together. I got a new toy. You've got a new toy. So I'll just very quickly mention about this bike. So this is obviously the main reason so Cal can come out with me while I go running. So he doesn't um, get lost and I know where he is, so I can keep an eye on him. <laughs> so make sure I'm back in time for dinner. Huh. You won't be there. Um, so you can be lazy mode, or we really should call it Carol mode. It will do 50 kilometers without you even cycling, darling. <laughs> That's very lazy, isn't it? Trust me, I'm not running 50 kilometres, um, and I think it's 100 kilometres if you try to cycle it. So uh, you can pop up to the coast if you want on it. Thanks. <laughs> not going to happen, is it? Actually, you could make it to Calm, couldn't you? Cycle all the way out there. But uh, yeah, a big thank you to uh, uh, Ellie Glide, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, and uh, we'll give it a go later. It's very but, elegant. It is. It's I, a nice colour too, matte black. It would have gone with your racy yellow shorts that you were looking about buying today. Maybe we should go back for those. Watch this space. <laughs> exactly. But it's perfect for what we want it for. So that uh, if, you, if your partner hates coming out running with you, but really wants to join you, there you go. You're not going to come running, are you, darling? Two chances. <laughs> we'll, we'll go out into the countryside and we'll do a bit of video later. But Carol's just asked me, um, take the bike out for a ride first before she goes on it make sure everything's all right um what i was thinking of doing was just maybe just taking it on one of my running routes so, uh, i'll put a i'll try and put a time lapse on it i don't even see but i've sort of rigged up um, one of my old tele uh, mobile phones um we'll see how it goes might be a bit bouncy but uh, you never know right so uh i thought i'd start by tying it on the road first uh just get a feel for because it is a uh, multi-terrain so it isn't just for mountain biking uh on the uh part well not the past so say the uh, the tracks it also uh has tires so it'll cater for roads as well uh, without making too hard work um cycled to the bottom of that hill to come up my god so i ended up having to move it down from the power settings so i thought i'd try it on five too powerful way too powerful too fast so i uh, dropped it down to three so for those who don't really like putting too much effort in it's fantastic. Uh, in fact, I've got another hill now, if I scroll around, which will take me right to the top, overlooking the village where the water tower is, which I quite often like running up to. Um, God, if only I could run this fast. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's give it another go up there. As I said, I've dropped the settings down, just keep the speed down a bit. Um, and I obviously, I need to have a workout. Um, but uh, I'll let you know. Right, so back on the road now. Um, the off-road was <laughs> probably very bouncy, probably too bouncy for the time-lapse. Um, what was good, which I completely forgotten, is actually I can open up the suspension on this bike. Uh, so in other words, don't lock it, and gives me a bit more uh, travel, and especially it made it a little bit better. As you can see, this is the uh, display that governs the, uh, well, speed, everything. Tripometer uh, for the light, uh, which is connected to the uh, battery, which is which I actually have done at night, and there's a very good light. Um, that's the obviously you can see the battery level, um, 
<coughs> probably pedaling too much, so I'm not really using the power too much. As I said, when I came up the first hill, uh, I had it on number five, too powerful. It, it literally, um, uh, when I was down at 15 mile an hour, it was kicking in, and uh, um, that's just too much when you're going up there, that sort of thing. So I've dropped it back to three, and it's worked out really well. It's a manageable speed. Um, clearly, if you're not really into mountain biking, <laughs> Absolutely ideal, really takes almost you don't pedal and you can go up the hills, um, don't have to fly up the hills. Uh, and enjoy it. So, yeah, that's the main purpose of this is get Carol out and, and uh, join with me uh, when I'm running. So I'm now back on the road. Um, I'm actually going to take the road probably all the way back home now, uh, be a lot easier. So dad was talking in this video, but unfortunately because he was cycling, the wind is just too loud and I don't want to hurt your ears any more than we probably already have. So you've got me again, it's Beth for those of you who don't know. So all he was saying about the bike is it's absolutely brilliant for those people who maybe don't want to go out cycling, but they don't want to do the hills. So dad obviously is quite fit, so dad can do the hills just fine, which is why he said that he's put it down to number three, because it was just a bit too powerful for him. But it does mean that mum can go out, I can go out, and we can go with dad while he's running. Dad does stupid kilometres and there's no way that I'm fit enough to keep up with him, but it means that we can get out, explore the area and have some fresh air while not absolutely exhausting myself. <laughs> so it's really good for everybody.